all workloads, right, whether they live in your data center or in public cloud, are communicating somewhere. Workloads are either going to a internet destination or they are going to a private application. And you need to make sure that these workloads are protected against download, uh, downloading anything bad or uploading to something which is really important for your organization to the data protection framework that we have built. Also, you want to make sure there's a lot of uh, uh, talk in the industry about segmentation, right? Getting the right segmentation framework going. So what we are able to achieve, leveraging our ZPA platform that we have built as the concept of a broader macro segmentation, as you move your workloads to the cloud, as they live in data center or in the branch, you want to make sure they are talking to the right set of uh, other applications, workloads, and they are not open for anyone to be exposed on internet or from an outside in perspective. Another thing that you want to make sure is when you are thinking about micro segmentation, you layer it in on top of the macro segmentation framework. And then for really critical applications, you can build deflection for your key application by emulating those softwares or applications by using our deception technology to protect your highly uh, uh, important and uh, assets, which are uh, your crown jewel applications. So all of these security uh, capabilities need to be stacked in, layered in, and we are giving them to you as a platform and not as a individual point product. Now let, let's walk through how our customers are setting up this infrastructure, right? How do you set up, uh, Amit talked about cloud connector, branch connector, from our perspective, this is the same software stack which is built to provide uh, and cover different set of use cases. When you think about your branches and your uh, workloads in the cloud, all of them as a operator of, as a network tech operator, as a security operator, you want to make sure you have a single pane of glass. So with our platform, what you're able to do is you are able to see all your cloud uh, VPCs, your VNets, you're able to see all your branches through a single pane of glass. So in this case, if I click on any of these uh, loca cloud locations, for example, you can see a bunch of VNets in Azure, you can see branch where we have deployed branch connector, you can see how they are communicating to which parts of your network. You can also see a full detailed view of all the branches and uh, cloud workloads where they're running, and then you can define policies around it. Now, a lot of you who have been operating ZIA, ZPA, ZDX, you know that our policy framework is very criteria and action driven. So we have a set of criteria, rules around which you can define access policies. We are taking the same framework and making it just a simple feature that you need to enable for your workloads and where they go. So typically, when you define the forwarding rules as a overlay zero trust architecture, you're, you can say that certain VPCs are going to the internet, here is the policy. Certain applications only talk to a certain segment of your applications, or a VPC can only talk to a, pro a production VPC or a to another uh, data center-based segment. You can define app-to-app -app segmentation policy. And sometimes you want these applications to go direct to internet, you just want to log what, the, what is the internet traffic going out, and you don't want to take an action on it. So all those traffic forwarding rules could be set up with just a click of a button in the uh, forwarding console that we have built. Now, if you want to set up an access policy, if you use our ZIA product, you know, uh, one of the criteria is location. If you have uh, enabled cloud connectors, all your cloud VPCs, VNets will start showing as a location. So you can define very simple access policy saying, here is a list of whitelist destinations where these applications can connect. Likewise, if you use ZPA, you know, we have the concept of app segmentation. Those segments could be defined based on these cloud locations. One of the things that happens as a result of it, these VPCs and VNets or branches or data center segments that we are creating become a criteria in ZPA policy. So you really do not need to like, recreate a new policy framework, deploy a new uh, set of infrastructure in order to protect your application. A lot of you are already protecting your application traffic coming to us from your data centers by sending traffic through GRE IPsec. Now what we are saying is you don't need to do that. You can actually create strong overlays by setting up this or extending this connectivity to the cloud stack as well. Now let's take an example of an application. Typically, we migrate applications to the cloud. In this example, we are talking about an intranet application which was running in 
our data center, we are moving it to AWS. Now, in the ZPA app-to-app -app segmentation policy framework, what we essentially are doing here, we are saying this internet application which has moved to a cloud VPC in AWS is, can talk to a couple of other app, uh, VPCs in AWS or to a PaaS service or a data store in Azure, and it can also talk to a, a data center or a branch location where you were running this application as a backup. So instead of opening this application to exposure from to the entire world, you are making that application accessible only where it should be accessed from. So very simple policy, leveraging the same framework that you're familiar with and all the logging that you're familiar with in ZPA, ZIA, just new set of attributes gets introduced based on which you can get this data out, integrate with the same and sort workflows that we already support, and you can see that new client types get introduced like branch connector or cloud connector, and new locations which are tied to the, uh, the VPCs and VNets that we are now organizing and bringing together. Let's take a second example, right? When applications talk to each other, you also want to make sure they're secure. A common example is a application which is uh, exposed to internet, right? And it's talking to a lot of uh, application data stores within your network. You want to make sure that application is not, uh, or someone accessing that application who has administrative access to that application is not able to exfiltrate data from that. So what we're going to do here is the same application that we were talking about, the internet app, right? We, we are going to put web application firewall rules to uh, block a SQL injection attack. We recently introduced the concept of uh, inspection, uh, in, uh, which is basically taking the web application firewalling control, OWASP top 10 vulnerability control in the ZPA data path. So what we are doing in this case is when you set up application segments in ZPA, right, you can choose to inspect that traffic uh, and then uh, terminate that traffic and look at any vulnerabilities inside that. So in this case, what we are saying is essentially allow the cloud connectors from this location to access that application. And I'm using a vulnerable application or a front end to exfiltrate and enumerate a lot of data from a web uh, database to basically get all the employee re records and uh, populate it here. So the moment you do that, basically I'm using a SQL injection as an attack vector. And if I have enabled the inspection, let's say this attacker is trying to exfiltrate this data using a web application front end, that will get blocked straight away. And even if they are using APIs or they are using any form of command line tools to get access, even that will get blocked. In your ZPA dashboard, you will start seeing the blocks that we are implementing as a result of <coughs> this WAF being implemented. So what you will see is, uh, the same inspection policy implemented in the same uh, logging framework, and that will also show you basically what inspection profile picked up, SQL injection was blocked, and which application that was targeting. So very, very uh, easy way to implement a inline blocking for application, which is talking to another application, and blocking access to data exfiltration using SQL injection. Let's talk about a second use case, right? The same attacker, let's say, if this access gets blocked, is now trying to exfiltrate data using FTP, right? So all of you are familiar with the DLP or data protection capabilities that uh, my colleague will talk in a few minutes about, uh, from now. We have a lot of inbuilt engines. One of the engines is PCI engine, right? So what we can now do as a result of this policy with uh, Cloud Connector being enabled in the ZI policy console is we can say, if the traffic comes from these specific VPCs or VNets of branch traffic, we, they become a criteria in the same policies. And then when a user is trying to exfiltrate data, you can see the FTP session is not getting established. And in the ZIA logs, you will see that the DLP policy kicked in against a VPC location, not a user, and at that time, the access was blocked. So full uh, inline control with our web application firewall we were able to demonstrate to you how data exfiltration could be blocked. And all of this is built as a capability on the core ZIA ZPA platform. And together with what Rich was talking about earlier, posture control, which gives you a lot of control around the shift website side as you bring applications to the cloud, as you operationalize them, you get all the benefits of configuration scanning, 
uh, exposure scanning and reducing your attack surface. And then as you operationalize these workloads in the public cloud, we also want to make sure that you have the runtime uh, security for that as well.